um, evolution really is a claim, evolutionary theory, Darwinian evolutionary theory, is a claim that uh, all of the apparent design in life, and, and most everybody recognizes that things look like they're designed, they, but that it is only apparent, that it is only an illusion, uh, that really a law and luck, chance and uh, chemical interactions are really responsible for all this, what looks like design, but it really isn't design because design has intent and purpose and is put together with forethought. That's a long definition. Intelligent design is simply a scientific disagreement with that perspective. And what's the disagreement based on? Data. It's, what is the data? The data is it, it, the tr tremendous amount of data in scientific literature, particularly in biochemistry, but also in, in cosmology and, and many other places, that points, uh, that has identified, I think, since certainly since 1953, when DNA was, uh, the code was cracked by Watson and Crick. Uh, what, they, what Watson and Crick discovered was a code. <laughs> they discovered a code. Every other code in the world that we know of came from a mind to conclude that DNA at some level somewhere originally came from a mind is not an irresponsible deduction from the data. When we look at some of the, uh, the, the biochemical machines that are in cells, and some of our witnesses will attest to this, and maybe even show some pictures, uh, now that we understand how some of these, these fantastically complex machines that work inside the simplest cells, we can see them now, we understand them now. Uh, the advance in modern molecular biology has shown us a world that can only be explained, in my view, by positing some kind of a plan in a, in a direction. I don't know who did it. I don't know how it was done. I don't know why it was done. I don't have to know any of that stuff to detect design. If I walked into my garage today and I found a six-foot bacterial flagellum <laughs> laying there and spinning at 100,000 RPM, it would, I would have no idea what it was besides maybe my weed whacker had gone nuts. Uh, but I would have no question in my mind that it was a designed object I would just have no, just not know what it was. But you can infer design just by examining something without knowing anything about where it came from. Does an inference of design entail a belief in a supernatural? Of course not. Of course not. Everything you see in this room was designed by an intelligence for a purpose. Uh, that's not supernatural. When we're talking, where supernatural comes into it is when we're talking about prehistory origins, where did we come from? When we, as far as we know, there weren't any intelligences there. So when, you, in that situation, you don't know if there was intelligence involved by direct observation. All you can do is look at the effects of what were left behind. In the same way that an archeologist looks, finds a, a, a stone and says, is this a tool or is it a rock? They're looking for an inference to design based on the data without knowing anything about the originator of that artifact. In the same way in biology, bringing that same thinking mentality into biology when we find what look like designed objects. The, to me, the onus is on those who would say it is not designed. Let me show you how that can happen by data, by scientific experiment. Let me show you how that can happen without any planning. That's great. I'll, I'll, I'll see, when I see the data, I'll believe it. Until that happens, the onus is on them to show it. Otherwise, design is the natural inference and should remain. Would you suggest that any time that we do not have a natural explanation, we ought to stop looking for it and invoke a miracle? No. We don't have a natural explanation. We can keep looking for it, but there has got to come a point, just as it came with the alchemists of the Middle Ages, when someone said, enough is enough. We're not going to make gold out of lead. If you have discovered via experimentation that your hypothesis is not supported, you abandon it. And is it your position that evolution is just simply not supported by the evidence? My position is that microevolutionary theory is very well supported by the evidence. Your macroevolutionary theory is not well supported by the evidence. One can build a story, but the evidence, I think, is, uh, is lacking for a firm conviction. There's a tremendous amount of data supporting intelligent design. Every biochemical journal you would open would find evidence for intelligent design. It's there on every page. It's just that the people that write those have blinders on and they don't want it to see it. That's my view, my opinion, that if one were to look at the data objectively 
and ask, where did that protein come from? And address that question, you would be forced to, into, if you're objective, to say, well, I don't know, it sure looks designed. Well, to say I don't know, in your opinion, then, the alternative that should be taught is that it was designed. I think we can determine that something was designed with, a, with, with great uh, alacrity. Most anybody can do that. Who is the designer? Uh, that I don't know. Would the designer imply a supernatural being? Uh, if you define supernatural for me. Something other than human? I think that's, uh, it's conceivable that something like that could exist.